In question 7a, we're presented with a diagram of a sloped road, AB. In this diagram, AC is horizontal and BC is vertical. We are told that AB is 70 metres and that BC is 9 metres. We are presented with a definition for the gradient of the road. It's defined to be the length of BC over the length of AC, written as a percentage. We need to find the gradient of the road correct to the nearest percentage. To use a definition of the gradient, we need to know two things. The length of BC and the length of AC. BC has been given to us directly. It's 9 metres. AC is not given to us, but we can find it using Pythagoras' theorem. This states that in a right angle triangle, the square of the hypotenuse is equal to the sum of the squares of the other two sides. The hypotenuse is the side opposite the right angle. Here, that's the 70 metres. This gets labelled with C in the theorem. The other two sides get labelled with A and B. Here, I'll label the length of AC as A and label the 9 as B. Subbing these into our theorem, we get 70 squared is equal to the length of AC squared plus 9 squared. 70 squared is 4,900 and 9 squared is 81. To get rid of the plus 81 on the right, we can subtract 81 from both sides. When we perform the calculation on the left, it comes out as 4819. Now, to get rid of the square, we can square root both sides. This tells us that the length of AC is equal to the root of 4819. We now know everything we need to calculate the gradient. By definition, the gradient is the length of BC over the length of AC. The length of BC is 9 and the length of AC is the root of 4819. Typing this fraction into our calculator gives us 0 0.12964747. We were asked to present the gradient as a percentage. To convert from decimal to percentage, we multiply by 100 and write in a percentage sign. When we round this off to the nearest percent, we come to the final answer that the gradient is 13%. In part B, Olga is looking at a point at the top of a hill, H. Olga wants to find the vertical height of this point. There's two points on the ground, R and P, which are 20 metres apart. And we know that the angle of elevation from R to H is 17 degrees. We're also told that the angle ORP is 88 degrees and the angle RPO is 87 degrees. We must use this information to find the distance from O to H. There is two triangles in our picture, ROH, which I've coloured in blue, and RPO, which I've coloured in red. The side that we're trying to find, OH, appears in the blue triangle. Unfortunately, we don't know much about this triangle. All we have is two angles, and we don't know any of the side lengths. In contrast, we know a bit more in the red triangle. 
Here, we have two angles and one side. An important thing to observe here is that the triangles share the side RO. If we can use the red triangle to find the length of this side, it will give us new information about the blue triangle and hence help us on our way to the final goal. The first thing to observe is that we know two out of the three angles in the red triangle. Since the angles in a triangle must add to 180, the third angle will be 180 minus 88 minus 87, which is 5. From here, we can find the length of the line RO by using the sine rule. A over sine A is equal to B over sine B. Here, I'll label the 5 degrees as capital A. The side opposite this, the 20 metres, will be labelled as lowercase a. I'll label the 87 degrees as capital B. And the side opposite this, RO, will be little b. Let's sub these into our formula. To find the length of RO, we'll want to get rid of the division of sine 87. To do this, we multiply both sides by sine 87. When we perform the calculation on the left hand side, we find that the length of RO is 229.16 metres. Now, let's turn our attention to the 17 degree angle in the blue right angle triangle. The side we're trying to find, OH, is opposite the 17 degree angle. The side adjacent to the 17 degrees is the 229.16 we've just found. In a right angle triangle, the tan of an angle is equal to the opposite over the adjacent. Here, the angle is 17 degrees, the opposite is OH, and the adjacent is 229.16. To find the length of OH, we'll want to get rid of the division by 229.16. We can do this by multiplying both sides by this number. From here, we can perform the calculation on the left hand side and round to the nearest metre. This brings us to our final answer. The length of OH is 70 metres. In the next part of the question, we're told that Olga has done some tests to measure her lung capacity. When she is resting, we can model the volume of air, V, in her lungs after t seconds with the following function. V of t is equal to 2 minus 0 0.4 times the cosine of pi over 2 t. Here, the volume is in litres, and t is the time in seconds. An important thing to note here is that the expression inside the cosine is measured in radians. This means that we'll need our calculator in radians mode for the duration of this question. Along with this written description, we've been provided with a visual representation of the same information in the form of a graph. Here, the vertical axis represents the volume of air in litres, whereas the horizontal axis is representing the time in seconds. In part C, we must find the minimum and maximum values of our function. These have been labelled A and B in the graph. If we analyse the structure of our function, we'll notice that the 2 and the minus 0 0.4 are constants. 
they won't change depending on the value of t. The only thing that changes is the cosine pi over 2 times t term. This means that the minimum and maximum values of our function will occur at the minimum and maximum of this expression. A useful piece of background knowledge here is the following. The function f of x equal to cosine of x has a minimum value of minus 1 and a maximum value of plus 1. It turns out that cosine of pi over 2t will also have a minimum of minus 1 and a maximum of plus 1. Even though the expression inside the cosine is different, this only affects the speed at which the curve moves, not the minimum and maximum points. To find the minimum and maximum values of our function, v of t, all we have to do is sub in the minimum and maximum values of the cosine pi over 2t. In other words, we should replace this expression with minus 1 and with plus 1. When we put in minus 1, we get 2 minus 0 0.4 times minus 1. This comes out as 2.4. When we put in plus 1, v is equal to 2 minus 0 0.4 times plus 1. This comes out as 1.6. So the answer here is that the minimum value for our volume, A, is equal to 1.6, and the maximum value of the volume, B, is equal to 2.4. In part D, we're asked to think about the connection between v dashed of t, the derivative of v, and whether Olga is breathing in or breathing out. The most important thing to remember here is that at its core, a derivative represents a rate of change. Here, the derivative v dashed of t represents the rate of change of our volume, v of t. Well, when Olga is breathing in, the volume of air in her lungs will be increasing. If something is increasing, this corresponds to a positive rate of change. So here, the rate of change v dashed of t will be positive. On the flip side, when Olga is breathing out, the volume of air in Olga's lungs will be decreasing. When something is decreasing, this corresponds to a negative rate of change. So here, the rate of change v dashed of t will be negative. In part e, we must use the formula for v of t to perform some calculations. Here, each answer should be rounded to three decimal places. First, we must find the volume of air in Olga's lungs half a second after t equals zero. Well, half a second after t equal to zero corresponds to t equal to a half. We want the volume of air at this time and that's precisely what our function v of t tells us. It tells us the volume. So here, all we have to do is substitute in t equal to a half into our formula. This gives us 2 minus 0 0.4 times the cosine of pi over 2 times a half. Ensuring that our calculator is in radians mode, we can perform this calculation and obtain the answer 1.717157. Since we were asked to round to three decimal places, the final answer here 
is 1.717 litres. In part two, we're asked to find the rate at which the volume of air in Olga's lungs is increasing half a second after t equal to zero. An important thing to pick up on here is that this question involves a rate of change. We're not looking at the volume itself, but rather the rate at which the volume is increasing. As we mentioned earlier, the derivative v dashed of t will represent the rate of change. Solving this question will first require us to calculate this derivative. We'll do this by differentiating our function v of t is equal to 2 minus 0.4 times the cosine of pi over 2t. Since additive constants differentiate to 0, the 2 will differentiate to 0 and simply disappear. Differentiating the minus 0.4 cosine pi over 2t is a bit more tricky. The first thing to observe is that the minus 0.4 is a multiplicative constant. This doesn't disappear, but it won't interfere either. It simply hangs on the side of our expression when we differentiate. So the main work here will be differentiating the cosine of pi over 2t. Since this is a layered expression, we'll need to use our chain rule when we differentiate. In the chain rule, we need to perform two differentiations, an inner differentiation and an outer differentiation. In this expression, the inner layer is pi over 2 times t. A constant times t just differentiates to the constant. So pi over 2t will differentiate to pi over 2. Now, looking at the outer layer, our expression is in the form of cosine of something. If we look at our formula book, we'll see that cosine differentiates to minus sine. Here, the something that we had inside the brackets was pi over 2t. So this comes out as minus sine of pi over 2t. Now that we've performed our two differentiations, we get our answer for the chain rule by multiplying together these two expressions. This means that the cosine pi over 2t will differentiate to pi over 2 times minus sine of pi over 2t. We've done the hard work now since we found our derivative v dashed of t. We can simplify our expression slightly by observing that the two minus signs will multiply together to give a plus, and also observing that 0.4 divided by 2 gives us 0.2. This brings us to the result that the rate of change at any time t, v dashed of t, will be equal to 0.2 times pi times sine of pi over 2t. We want to know the rate of change half a second after t equal to 0. In other words, we need the rate of change when t is equal to a half. To find this, all we have to do is sub in a half to our derivative. This gives us 0.2 pi times sine of pi over 2 times a half. Again, ensuring that our calculator is in radians mode, we can perform this computation to get an answer of 0.444288. Rounding to three decimal places brings us to our final answer of 0 0.444 litres per second. 
In part F, we're told that Olga's breathing was also measured when she was doing gentle exercise. During this time, she has 3.6 litres of air in her lungs when she breathes in fully, and 1.3 litres when she breathes out fully. We're also told that she breathes in and out twice as many times per minute as when she is resting. We need to use this information to find a formula for E of T, the volume of air in Olga's lungs during this exercise. The first thing to notice here is that the structure of E of T is very similar to the V of T we've been working with throughout this question. Because of this, we can use the structure of V of T as a starting point and then adapt things as necessary to get E of T. On the left here, I've copied out a portion of our graph for V of T, which was on the previous page. Earlier, we found that the minimum value of V of T was 1.6, and the maximum value was 2.4. In the diagram, I've also drawn in a horizontal line at the midpoint between the minimum and maximum. This takes place at the value of 2. You might notice that the additive constant at the beginning of V of T is also equal to 2. This is not a coincidence. Due to the symmetry of cosine, this number will always be equal to the midpoint between the maximum and minimum values. Labelling our graph for E of t in a similar way will allow us to find the value of a. Well, when exercising, we're told that Olga has 3.6 litres of air in her lungs when she breathes in fully. In other words, the maximum value of E of t will be 3.6. We're also told that there's 1.3 litres in her lungs when she breathes out fully. This means the minimum value will be 1.3. To find the label for our blue line, we simply need to find the midpoint of these two values. We do this by adding the numbers together and then dividing by 2. Here we get 3.6 plus 1.3 all divided by 2, which comes out as 2.45. This will be our value for A. Turning our attention to B, if we look at V of T, we have a minus 0.4 in this slot. So, what does this correspond to? Well, in our graph, 0.4 is the distance between the midpoint to one of the extremes. In other words, the distance from 2 to 1.6, 0.4, and also the distance from 2 to 2.4 is 0.4. Turning back to E of t, we can find the value of b by finding the distance between the maximum and the midpoint line. To do this, we take the maximum value, 3.6, and subtract the value for the midpoint, 2.45. This gives us an answer of 1.15. We do have to be careful with our signs here. In v of t, we found our distance to be 0.4, but in the formula it appeared as minus 0.4. For E of t, we found our distance as 1.15, but in the formula it's going to appear as minus 1.15. The minus sign here comes from the fact that our function is starting at its minimum value instead of the maximum. This is a result of the fact that our measurements are beginning at a time when Olga has breathed out fully.
we're nearly there now. All we have to do is find the value of c. This represents the speed at which our curve is going up and down. When Olga was resting, we had a pi over 2 appearing in this position. We're told that when she exercises, she breathes in and out twice as many times per minute as when she is resting. One way to think of this is that our curve will move twice as fast. Since the pi over 2 was essentially representing the speed of the curve, if we want it to move twice as fast, all we have to do is multiply this figure by 2. This tells us that c will be equal to pi over 2 multiplied by 2, which comes out as pi. Putting everything together, our final answer is that e of t is equal to 2.45 minus 1.15 times the cosine of pi t.